Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbare, and welcome back to Day Your Sex. We'll be going down to Tenochi Road now. Or actually in a little bit. See, the thing is that I missed a couple things because they were not placed in the large regular crates. Turns out these little cardboard boxes here also contain stuff. At least on this map. Now obviously I don't need a pair of binoculars, but there are a few other small cardboard boxes I did not break open, which yet contain goodies. They're actually down on the giant sampan here. God! Not too much damage. But first of all, you've got these wicker baskets here, which for whatever reason are filled with swords. Smuggling, I guess? Well, whatever. So back here in the engine room, these cardboard boxes in the crate, one of them contains 300 credits. Very nice. I mean, entirely random, but very nice. I'll have to keep an eye out for those little cardboard boxes in the future. But as for right now, it's time to go to Tenochi Road and finally have a Not chat. Advisable for tourists to visit the canals. I don't know if you're sick of him saying that, but I'm sick of him saying that. Now let's go see Maggie Chow, finally. You are an unfamiliar face on Tonochi Road. I'm here on business from Gordon Quick. You are here to speak to Miss Chow, perhaps. Half a block down on the left. Thank you. The woman is a snake. Believe nothing she says. I myself have been watching Miss Chow. She just met with Max Chen, leader of the Red Arrow. You may go about your business. We had an agent in the building across the street. But he left for business in the United States. Don't let yourself be fooled. Maggie Chow is a clever woman. Interesting. Oh, there are a few other people down here. I bet you come from the market. That's where I want to go. My mother said there's too much fighting. I have to stay here. I don't hear any fighting. The triads know better than to cause trouble in public. I hate to not you Well, that's a shame, but it's not that far a walk to get across the canals. Strangers in Hong Kong should stay near the market. The side streets are not safe for tourists at night. Did anybody else hear that? You should always carry a map. Strangers in Hong Kong should stay near the market. Maggie Chow wants to see me. I assume that's her hotel across the street? That is correct. How do I get up to see her? The main elevator. Maggie Chow would be angry if you arrived any other way. This is a dead end. I advise you to turn back toward the market. This is a dead end. I advise you to turn back toward the market. Well, turns out that he's right. Something I like about Tonochi Road is all of the neon lights. That's sort of what you'd expect from a... You missed them. They left over an hour ago. Chinese street. Guess they're painting up there. Saw it on their boots when they came out of the alley. I used to paint myself. Think they're hiring? I used to paint myself. I'm looking for a way into this building. Use front of building. Only try out use sidewall living back. Good advice. Best advice, avoid red arrow. I used to paint myself. Best advice, avoid red arrow. So that's the entrance here that they're talking about. I could use an explosive, but then that giant robot would get angry, and you do not want a giant robot angry with you. That's just generally good advice. Welcome to Queen's Tower. You may use the residential directory computer if you know how. The seventh floor is closed for renovations. 
All guests must use the main elevator. Again, I apologize for not providing additional assistance. Interesting architecture in here. Huh. Apparently Maggie Chow rats people out. That's not surprising. Some sort of break room in here. 50 credits isn't that bad, but it does have this security terminal. And that allows us to hack three cameras and open that side passageway with zero lockpicks and zero explosives. Very convenient. Looks like there's like one floor per person. Must be some pretty nice apartments. Well, there's a code to use the elevator. But I can go straight up to Miss Chow's apartment. That's awfully convenient. Now I'm actually going to avoid my usual instincts of exploring everywhere on this one occasion just so we can see how this is supposed to play out. I'm looking for Maggie Chow. You must be Mr. Denton. Miss Chow has been expecting you. She is waiting in the living room. Please follow me. Now, when I say this is... I will is... accompany you. Yes, thank you. Now, when I say this is how it's supposed to play out, I mean that this is how you get the most plot out of this particular visit. The game... The floor coverings were made by hand in Tibet. ...is very open-ended about letting you choose how to deal with Maggie Chow. Mr. J.C. Denton, in the fresh. As dark and serious as his brother. You know who I am. And Paul? You know my brother? Intimately. Call me Maggie. Paul never mentioned you. That is why he is still alive. He can keep a secret even from his own brother. But why... Paul told you about Majestic 12, correct? The conspiracy behind you, Natko? Just the name. Majestic 12 sent Paul to murder the former Red Arrow leader. And me too. And he double-crossed them? Rest to say I persuaded him to join our side. What does Majestic 12 want with the Red Arrow? We are winning the Triad War against Majestic 12's ally, the Luminous Path. We were developing a new technology. You might have heard about a sword? The Dragon's Tooth, right? The Triad settled disputes in contests of skill, which includes the crafting of weapons. The Dragon's Tooth would have made us unstoppable. So Majestic 12, they're trying to tip the balance, give the Luminous Path a technological advantage. Exactly. I try to warn the people of the danger. And the Luminous Path calls me a liar. The police have all the evidence they need to settle this. Locked up in the station at the Wan Chai Market. But they will not act. Go and see. I know the code to their vault. 87342. It's only fair to tell you that I spoke with Gordon Quick before coming here. I thought he was a friend of my brother's. I agreed to visit you and learn the truth of the situation. Yes, you were seen. The new Red Arrow leader is Max Chen, and you don't have to go to the Lucky Money for him to know your activities. Now tell me about Paul. Why did he not return? Paul's on his way to Hong Kong. I don't know when he will arrive. Then you must think for yourself. In Hong Kong, the truth is seldom kept in plain sight. Take a look around. Interesting note. In some of the early versions of the game, Maggie Chow is supposed to be Paul Denton's wife. We have many prized Buddhas, you will observe. From up here, the city is scenery. A mountain that never changes. But everywhere the sands are shifting. We cannot know who to trust. The police, even our own families. I could look around, try to learn something about the Luminous Path. All the necessary evidence is at the police station in Wan Chai Market. If only the police would act. I will accompany you. The Luminous Path are easy prey. All Majestic 12 must do is wave some money under their noses. We must expose the conspiracy behind the Luminous Path. Then they will fall apart from the inside. The floor coverings... When your brother arrives, please tell him I have an important matter to discuss. 
Take a look around. Hello, company. Go to the police station. You will find the information we need. Sorry about that odd cut there. I had uh, technical issues. So anyway, even though Maggie Chow is obviously lying, what with the fact that her story matches with no other story we have heard from anybody else in all of Hong Kong, we're going to do exactly what she says. Mostly because I never do this. This is the first time I have ever done this, not including practice recordings for this LP. You may go about your business. But, um, yeah, usually my desire to explore gets the better of me, and that you kind of for tourists to visit cuts you place. off from a couple lines of dialogue. <laughs> Gotta love super speed. It cuts you off from a couple lines of dialogue and some interesting events in the future. <gasps> Please, look around. And so I am instead doing exactly what she asked me to do, and so I'm going into the police station, which I conveniently happened to clean out earlier. And using the password she gave me to go into this, uh, underground area. Obviously this well-lit data cube has the information we need, which is specifically that the police know that Maggie Chow killed the old dragon head of the Red Arrow. Now obviously that's not actually very much news, since everyone pretty much guessed that, that we uh, met along the way. And so like I said, this is just to see what's supposed to happen, because it provides the most dialogue of any of your options. Alright, now that we know that the police, as well as everybody else, knows that Maggie Chow, you know, works for MJ-12, assassinated the old Red Arrow leader. Not advisable for tourists to visit the canal. And is stealthily influencing the Red Arrow, uh, the, the new dragon hit of the Red Arrow, Max Chen. So now it's time to go back and confront her about it. Wish this button didn't make you wait, but I will take this opportunity to load some Willy Pete rounds. Some, I just get this impression like I might need it in the near future. Along with the shotgun. Oh, hello there, Maggie Chow's maid. Now, I don't actually want to encounter you in this room. So I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to lead you in the chase all the way around here to this particular spot in... Okay, you're still following me, that's good. But I want to encounter you in this particular spot in the middle of her... living room. Whatever you'd call this. I'm sorry. Miss Chow is not at home. Yeah, well, tell her I know she double-crossed the Red Arrow, and I intend to prove it. You are mistaken, Miss Chow. She should never have sent me to the police station. Now I know she's hiding something and I intend to find out what it is. No! No! You are mistaken! Guards! She would have shot me. Alright, wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah! That killed every single MJ-12 trooper in this entire map. Gotta love those Willy Pete rounds. So, now that that's been taken care of, you might notice Maggie Chow is not here. She used the time that it took for me to go all the way around to, you know, get the hell out of here before I came back wielding Willy Pete rockets. Alright, now I'm gonna show you the stealthy through Maggie Chow's apartment method of getting into the back area first step is to come up here. The maid will follow you around, but if you go into one of the back rooms, you can quietly take care of her using a silenced weapon or the uh, shock prod. I'm guessing this is uh, Maggie Chow's bedroom with a nice view and the giant ass bathroom. Skylight and... Oh man, I killed the cat. 
sorry about that. Anyway, no time to mourn. So here it says, we learned Maggie Chow's favorite two books were Typhoon and Insurgent, both of which are on this table here. And we just learned from that data cube that Typhoon was, is her old password, and she's changed it since she was worried about a security breach. Now the one on her desk is for the future, I guess, but you can guess her username, M. Chow, like everybody else's username. And if you use her second favorite book, you can access the security system for the MJ-12 area here. That includes opening a door and turning off three cameras. So, now that you've taken care of the maid and opened up a certain door, there is one other door you need to open. See, this area here, that Buddha, you cannot lower from this side. But there is another way in. And in fact, it has no lasers for you to worry about. Another paper lantern with a secret door will get you in here. Greetings, J.C. Denton. I have been observing you through this fascinating device in your skull. You have found the proof we needed. The Dragon's Tooth Sword. They are inside the glass case. If you wish to be my ally, you will retrieve the sword and await my instructions. So yeah, you can stealth this area completely. Just by going into Maggie Chow's apartment. None of the MJ-12 troopers are around here. Ms. Chow, we are reassigning you temporarily. Put the long-term agenda on hold until Versa Life has met its deadline. It will be months and probably years before the Red Arrow can influence Beijing, whereas, well, I'm sure you heard about my appointment. We are in position to make a grab for Washington. We can't let this one slip through our fingers. Make sure the process stays on schedule. Hmm. That actually makes you wonder, exactly how much is Beijing controlled by MJ-12 already? Doesn't it sound like it's by that much? Before we open the weapons case, let's check our emails. So once again, the Deus Ex Bible might be wrong, or it could be that it's more under the control of the Old Guard, the Illuminati, than it is under the control of MJ-12. thing about the dragon's tooth sword, it's even bigger than a normal sword. Also note the damage, base damage 10. Get rid of some of my excess here. Base damage 100! So even though I have no low-tech weapons skill, I can murder the hell out of people with this thing. Also it's a lightsaber. It uses nanotechnology to create a uh, non-eutactic solid, but it's a lightsaber, let's be honest. Oh yeah, I also got my riot prod back. Keep trying to get rid of it, but it keeps dragging me back in. Instead I actually got rid of the uh, regular pistol. Basically everything I need the regular pistol to do uh, one of my other weapons can do better. I've got the silence pistol, which shoots faster. I've got the shotgun, which uh, deals more damage and is faster. And I've got the sniper rifle to deal tons of damage all at once and is silenced. So anyway, there are actually two additional ways into the MJ-12 back rooms here. Upstairs from the roof and downstairs from the renovation floor. I'm actually going to check the renovation floor first. Because there's a couple things in here to make life easier moving forward. Oh. 
Looks like there's someone here. You have 20 credits, mister. What for? I will be honest. It is crash. A big crash. Uh, I just need a little for the pain. She doesn't have much information, but 20 credits isn't that much money. A forgotten virtue like honesty is worth at least 20 credits. You are so kind. It was nothing. You're looking for Maggie Chow. Why? You know something? She lives upstairs, but don't come in this way. Her guards are the only ones who use the gate. They don't like people snooping around. Thanks for the tip. I guess she lives here. Pillow. Pathetic amount of food. Sounds about right. Uh, this is the Queen's Tower security password. And the in shaft, uh. What do you call that? Keypad? Now, this keypad is just plain broken. But what the hell? It shut. I'm not sure it should shut like that, but. Whoops. Well, that's why I saved. It's a bit of a tricky jump. I mean, this th lattice acts as sort of a ladder, but, um, well, you do get a scramble grenade back here, and that's all it's really used for. It won't let me in. Hmm. I was hoping to take it downstairs, but I guess I'll use the lattice work for that. Kind of takes longer. It's a little annoying. But I don't really have a choice. Now I reach the part with a giant hole in the lattice work. I don't know, maybe I could make the jump to that ladder over there. If I'm careful. Or not. can't really get anywhere since both of the uh, elevators are up and not down but this this is where that service door comes out didn't want to have to do this exactly but I can at least bring both elevators down from here I'll just go back out through the service door. That'll get me on top of both of the elevators. Now this keypad here. This is the one whose code I got on the renovation floor. And this is what, it, is what it's useful for. Reaching the roof. Free multi-tool. I'm still full up on those. Looks like there's a ladder I might have been able to use, but... Well, whatever. So this is how you get into the back area. Or you could just... Go through the roof here. Go through the skylight. I don't think there's any real jumping to be done. Ah, whoops. And this is why using the skylight is not the stealthy approach to this particular conundrum. But it's, luckily we don't have to stay here for very long. We'll just be getting out through another window. And now it's time to explore this apartment. That alarm lasts for freaking ever, by the way. That's why I did not want to uh, turn it on. Oh, this is Jock's apartment. So he's the American agent who is keeping tabs on Maggie Chow. And now we know his password. Let's see if he's got any decent food in here. Well, it's fairly well stocked, but there's the usual junk food. So in his closet is actually where he's hidden his uh, computer terminal. Email from Paul before shit hit the fan. 
Tracer Tong talking about surveillance. And Daedalus, this is how, uh, that is how Jock wound up coming back to uh, New York early. And also, that door is infinite, infinite, which means that uh, that was the only way to get into this apartment, at least right now. There's another key you can find, but it, you can only find it after the part I'm at right now. This is the elevator to get up to Jock's apartment level, and I want to show you something here quick, assuming I hit the right button. See, it's kind of interesting. There's no lattice work, there's no ladder here. There's no way up if you're on the roof of this particular elevator. You can see that there. However, there is a way out. I suspect specifically to keep you from getting into an absolutely unwinnable situation. I bet you come from the market. That's where I want to go. I suppose that's what the skull here symbolizes. Anyway, just a neat little fact. That little area there really isn't for anything else except to get you out of a problematic situation. So it's nice that they thought of it. Now there's one other area to explore on Tenochi Road. And that's to get up onto the roof of Jock's apartment building. Now you can get back through here. But if you continue, make this kind of troublesome corner jump here. You'll find a sniper nest. Interesting. Also kind of odd, because Maggie's apartment is way over to the side there. Like, you cannot possibly shoot her from this angle, so you gotta wonder who this sniper's nest was set up to kill. Anyway, you can actually keep going from the sniper nest. You can drop down to a bunch of ledges here, and if you get all the way down to the end, which is at this billboard here, you can get a couple other goodies. Biocell, a lockpick, and 40. In fact, we might be able to use one of those. Now this last jump here is a doozy. But it's completely doable, even if you don't have super speed. Oh. Super speed just means it harms you less. And you can actually jump around on the signs from here, but there's nothing else to pick up, nothing beyond the goodies on the uh, billboard and the sniper's nest. Not advisable for tourists to visit the canals at night. Now I figure, you know, it won't take that much time. So let's get the sword, dragon's tooth, back to Max Chen. It's a whole bunch of loading areas, but not that long of a run. And on a modern computer, the loading doesn't take much time at all. Also, I don't feel like going upstairs, so... I feel silly. You look good. Move your head Direct so approach. More. Isaac there is letting go. anybody back here these days. I don't think Isaac let me through the window there, buddy. But yeah, they don't care, even if it's your first trip. Kind of funny. Stay your business and go. I have found something in Miss Chow's apartment that might interest you. Is that so? The sword was never destroyed. It was stolen, and she is the one who stole it. Preposterous! I have it right here. But, Miss Chow? She works for a group called Majestic 12. She's using you and the Red Arrow for her own ends. No, you must be mistaken. Think about it. She murders your predecessor, hides the sword, pushes the Red Arrow into the war with the Luminous Path, and then, what next? The triads are weakened, and an outside group seizes power. Sound far-fetched? Oh, there must be an explanation. Perhaps you should meet with the leaders of Luminous Path. Hmm, perhaps. For now, I'll take them this message. I will stop hostilities until I have completed an investigation. Boss, what is it? Marty at the door, so we have trouble. Soldiers coming in. She said I was some kind of max. MJ-12 troops, they must have followed me. I wonder if they followed me from the billboard. Also, Say hello to the commandos. These troops, they are not human. I'll 
not completely. They're still mostly human, though. Ooh. Also, they carry bioelectric cells and the occasional consumable item. So apparently the uh You had another food! Apparently all the red arrow guys here are pretty effective. Normally they don't take care of the uh MJ12 commandos quite so easily. But hey, I'm not complaining. More bullets for me to keep. And it's Time for you to go. not like killing them gets me any experience or anything. I will not doubt you again. Now hurry, take my message to the luminous path. That was crazy. Time for you to go. If Maggie Chow is still alive, I will kill her myself. Hurry, we don't have much time. Hurry, we don't have much time. Time for you to go. I don't know what MJ-12 was thinking, because he was on the ropes until they attacked him. But now the threat is exceedingly obvious. Also, I just wanted to show this off. You can use the uh, security terminal here to open the safe. That's all. It was only one multi-tool anyway, so I didn't you know, bother doing it that- Thanks for getting me in. Well, I'm glad she still appreciates my help. Uh-oh. What the hell? Come on, guys. Put in all this effort to not kill you, and yet you go and do this for to me. Also, just wanted to show, there's a lockpick very cleverly hidden behind the uh, advertisement panel on the uh, refrigerator. I'm betting it's your fault, Lawrence. For today's Conspiracy Corner, I'd say it's a good time to take a look at celebrities, Hollywood, and the cult of personality. First, I'd like to start out with some basics. Why Celebrities Exist You all know the type. Nearly all of you have met them, and a few of you are them. I'm talking about the sort of person who gets obsessed with someone they've never met. They have to know everything there is to know about this person. They own everything he or she has created, and they often make assumptions about their subject's personality or knowledge or even imagine that there's a special connection between them. Or if the obsession isn't over a person, then it's over a fictional setting or a kind of animal or supernatural creature such as vampires or dragons. Where details are lacking, they'll make up some of their own, and where details are inconvenient or unfortunate, they'll replace them occasionally to the point of self-delusion. So where do these people keep coming from? Well, it's actually a pretty simple extension of the conflict between self and other. Every social animal has the ability to extend their sense of self to their family, to their herd or pack. To attack one is to attack them all. But we humans, have the remarkable ability to extend our sense of self to ideas, to words and symbols. This is how someone can be personally offended by the burning of a flag. Nothing's being destroyed beyond fabric, but the fabric is a symbol of a nation, and a citizen can have a personal connection to his or her nation. This means that burning a flag can be in a very real sense, just the same as trying to burn that citizen's hand. And to my knowledge, this symbolic connection is something that no other animal can manage. So what happens with celebrities is that humans can make this symbolic connection to other people as well, especially to people they've never really met. After all, when you know somebody, you have to deal with the fact that they're ultimately a different person, whereas symbols are more easily maintained. Now, there's also a sort of competition 
between people who carry the same symbols. To know more about a symbol means you're more closely aligned with it, and you deserve more respect than someone with less knowledge. With fictional worlds, this means going through all of the spin-offs, reading all of the errata and all the setting books, and whatever else a dedicated fan might get up to. But when the symbol is a person, this means keeping yourself up to date on all the gossip, checking out all the paparazzi photos, and reading all of the rumor rags and the websites. Once that's done, you head to your favorite social group, online or offline, and proceed to argue about everything true or false. Then there's the imitation. Once you make someone else a part of yourself, you'll naturally want to make yourself more like them. This can mean wearing the same fashions, holding the same opinions, buying the same products, or more constructively, it can mean mimicking their styles in whatever field they're good at. Heroes and celebrities are ultimately different aspects of the same phenomenon. The Conspiracies So, everything that I said about extending your sense of self, you can do that with your sense of other, too. Some things that people love, others love to hate, and you can form a community around that hatred, or dislike, if hate's too strong a word, just like you can around a shared passion. Celebrities can thus have fandoms who wish them the best, but then also detractors who can't wait to see them stumble. And if these detractors have some other interesting obsessions, this can lead to some very creative rumors. Celebrities who have no private or political influence don't really fit into the master scheme of interlocking secret societies, so I can only provide a few scattered examples here. I mean, Hollywood is naturally puppeteered by the illuminated Freemasons through their control of the Jews, the corporations, or whatever. But individual celebrities can have some pretty varied theories applied to them. Uh, for instance, Lady Gaga likes to dress up in some pretty crazy outfits. Some of these are more occultish than others, and occult equals Satanism equals the Illuminati, equals the New World Order. Needless to say, this connection also extends to occult and subversive films, like Harry Potter, The Matrix, and Fight Club. Triangles and pyramids are another big thing. Basically, if you have a triangle or a pyramid on screen for any reason, it's an Illuminati symbol. Oh, and eyeballs, too. It's really amazing how much of this stuff is based on one kind of creepy image on the back of the one dollar bill that nobody quite understands what it means anymore. Walt Disney is a perennial favorite, if for no other reason than the major impact his company has had on ourselves and our parents. According to the rumors, he's a Nazi-loving anti-Semite who works with Jews and had his head, or even his entire body, frozen upon his death, and had it hidden underneath Disneyland. Uh, people will read in all sorts of subliminal messages into frames from the movies, posters, the castles. Uh, then in the 80s, some of the employees evidently heard about these rumors, and they've been trolling the conspiracy theorists ever since. In one episode of DuckTales, there's an eye chart that reads, Ask About Illuminati. And in an episode of The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, somebody wrote The Illuminati Reveals very clearly on a chalkboard. The Simpsons has gotten in on that act, too. And so has SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, moving on to an older rumor. Have any of you seen The Rocketeer? The villain is a suave English action hero who's Errol Flynn in all but name, and it turns out at the end that he's also a German spy. The thing is, that's actually based on a rumor started by Charles Higgum, who wrote a scathing and mostly fictional biography of Errol Flynn in 1980. Uh, but of course, the rumor is as laughable as Timothy Dalton's German accent. 
In actuality, Flynn tried to join the armed forces in 1942 when he became a citizen, but he failed the physical thanks to a bad heart and all sorts of venereal diseases, something the studio kept quiet because of his status as an action hero. Plus, if anything, he was a strong leftist. He wrote and produced the pro-Cuban movie Cuban Rebel Girls in Cuba after the Communist Revolution. Personal Thoughts I've never had a personal hero. No one I'd point to and say, I want to be just like him. I remember back in school, I'd get essay questions like, who do you consider to be your hero? Or, who would you like to meet more than anyone? And I'd be stumped. I'd have to make something up. Now, this doesn't mean I don't appreciate other people. I love my parents and my grandparents. And like any aspiring writer, I'm influenced by a short list of authors I really like. Isaac Asimov, Paul Anderson, Mercedes Lackey, Corey and Laurie Ann Cole, and although it's uncool to admit it, R.A. Salvatore. Still, I've never had any desire to meet them or to get inside their heads and know more about them than about myself. Could be it's something to do with the social anxiety, but hell if I know. The point is, I'm the weird one here. And even so, I'm not that weird. My interests are more generalized than obsessed over one fictional setting or hobby or group of actors. But I can still get invested in something. I can still care about other people, both real and fictional. And I can still be optimistic about the future despite who I know is going to be in charge of it namely humans. And given that at this point, I've basically described every person who exists on this planet, I don't think we should be too harsh on those who suffer from the celebrity touch. It's merely an extension of our most human nature. We've all got something to keep us on this planet. And if you don't, you should get one. Thanks for joining me again in Conspiracy Corner, and I hope I'll see you soon.